have a signature outfit and what would it be as if you were designed for a tv show and your character model only had one outfit designed for them what would that outfit be signature outfit okay i love asymmetrical things i wear a lot of black and it's not just from my time in new york um i think it would be something tunicky and also leggings and something a little funky that would be my signature outfit i suppose what is your favorite or your most memorable or the worst friend show you've ever seen okay so i know it's kind of weird but sometimes we have the memory of the worst show and i think this was the worst show it was a show that I had read the script for, I'm not going to tell you the name. Um, you can PM me or message me and I might share that with you. But uh, this show was an interactive show. I had read the script. It was amazing and powerful. And then actually at the show, the artist uh, was really rough with the audience and had this whole scene where he was eating chicken wings and then throwing them at the audience. Uh, he had the smallest houses of any show I'd ever been to. And then about a month later, um, that theater told me that they had found a chicken wing that had slid underneath a platform. Um, it, but it wasn't even funny bad. It was just bad, bad. Do you put your pants on with the right leg or left leg first? Or do you jump in with both at the same time? I kind of want to know if I've been doing it wrong all these years. No one has ever asked me that before, but generally I'm a person that I put on my left pant leg, my socks, and then I put on my left sock, then I put on my right pant leg and my right sock, then I pull up the pants. So I hope you've been doing that right, Richie. Hey, Audrey, I'd love to hear about your experience with clowns. My connection with clowns. Well, I have to say it's been a long and winding road. I mean, I remember seeing uh, a Ringling show when I was a kid, and I didn't necessarily think that clowns were particularly funny, but they were very memorable. And part of it was that they had the white face, and I was talking very close to a guy, and he smelled terrible. If you've ever smelled grease paint mixed with sweat, you know what I'm talking about. But he had a big smile painted on and he was tired and grumpy. So it was very strange. So that was my first memory. And then later I saw a performance of someone who had gone to Del Arte. And I thought, this is really weird. Um, I wasn't sure if they knew what they were doing. I wasn't sure how much of it was real, the actor or the clown. Now, that was intriguing. The first show that I saw that was the clown that I ended up, the type of clowning that I ended up doing was a show called Clowns in the Vagina. And um, it wasn't about what the title might suggest, but basically it was amazing. Um, the three clowns, and the show is directed by Sue Morrison, the three clowns clearly had an outline were hilarious physical comedians, but the show changed so much every night. And I saw that in the New York Fringe Festival in 2000. And I was also in the festival doing a dramatic show, but I made time and I went to see all of the performances and they were totally different every time. In fact, one of them, the power went out in the building and they ran outside and all the audience, we ran outside with them and they finished the show outside. And it was crazy and exciting. And that just really piqued my curiosity. I wanted to be that connected with the audience and that connected with the story, but also the freedom to let loose. So then I started studying. Then I ran the New York Clown Theater Festival uh, for 10 years, started and founded that. And then I got into hospital clowning, which I think is one of the most amazing art forms ever. And uh, I will talk until the end of the night every single time about clowning. So be careful if you ask me because it'll be a long conversation. 